Welcome, family and friends. We have gathered here this evening to celebrate the relationship of Troy and Tiffany Tremaine. We are gathered in the sight of God to rejoice in his crowning creation, the love between a husband and wife. Troy and Tiffany have chosen this evening to testify to the faithfulness of God across these years in their marriage and to celebrate with all of you, the people they love the very most. Let's bow our heads together and pray, asking God to bless this gathering with his presence. Almighty God, we honor you this evening. Having been gathered in your name, we come together to celebrate with our friends. We thank you that love is your idea, God, and that your very character is love. We thank you, God, that across the pages of the scriptures, we see nothing but love. We thank you that in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Savior, you demonstrated the extent of your love for us. And we thank you that in every blade of grass, in every flower, in every leaf, in every tree, in the sky, in the birds, in the creatures of the field, in a million ways every day, you say, I love you. And so tonight, as we celebrate with this family, this husband and this wife, we pray your blessing upon this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Troy and Tiffany have prepared some comments to share with one another at this time. As I stand here across from my lovely bride, I find it inconceivable that we've been married for 15 years already. It feels like yesterday that we stood together and said our vows. I vowed to love and cherish you in sickness and in health for richer and poorer forever. These vows still hold true for me today. I plan on loving you and cherishing you as much as humanly possible or with God's help, even more than humanly possible. I love you, Tiffany Tremaine. What we have together is true love. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. Um, well, rewind a little bit, like 17 years, March 26th on our first date where I cut your spaghetti. Um, I knew that uh, you were mine after a long, hard road of not having God, I saw God. And even though you might not have been close to him at that time, I knew that I was going to be going somewhere. And shortly after we met and I went to church to impress your parents, <laughs> Um, I never left, and I owe God um, my new life, and I will never forget it. Um, he has brought me you, and you have brought me sons, and I love you for being a father, um, a husband, my best friend, and I can't wait for 15 to 35, 50 more. Tonight, there's a special treat for all of us. You can see on the stage here this board with ropes on it. And this is a, a symbol of unity that the couple is going to braid together. And while they're braiding that, we have some beautiful music, and so we're thankful for that as well. The brown ropes that you see represent Troy and Tiffany, and the white rope that you see signifies Jesus. And so as they braid them together, they demonstrate the strong bond of three, husband, wife, and savior. The sound of one who makes a 
This evening, as we gather the couple, we'll be serving communion to everyone. And so we'll invite you in just a few moments to move to the center aisle, if you are able, and come forward to be served by Troy and Tiffany. We invite you to take a piece of bread, to dip it in the grape juice, to eat it, and return to your seats by way of the outside aisles. But before that, Hear these words of blessing over the sacrament of communion. The communion supper instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a sacrament which proclaims his life, his sufferings, his sacrificial death and resurrection, and the hope of his coming again. It shows forth the Lord's death until his return. The supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Holy Spirit. It is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. And all those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sins and believing in Christ for salvation are invited to participate in the death and resurrection of Christ. We come to this, his table, that we may be renewed in life and salvation and made one by the Spirit. In unity with the church, we confess our faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. We gather at this the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the Spirit was appointed to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to captives, set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and established the new covenant for forgiveness of sins. We live in the hope of his coming again. You may go and prepare to serve. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would the congregation please stand? And as you are able, we invite you to move to the center aisle and make your way forward to receive the elements.
won't kick down, why you won't sit down, come and act with me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, come and act with me. There's no ball you won't kick down, why you won't sit down.
Troy's father, Jim Tremaine, would like to come now and say a few words for us. Well, after spending 53 years being married, I have discovered that marriage is not a sprint, but it's a long-distance race, and it's a mystery. Uh, we have learned so many things along the way, and um, you will learn even more. Over, after 15 years, it's just starting, and I just want to share some things that... Uh, are a reminder to all of us in these days when there's so much culture pushing in around us and telling us what to do. A few scriptures says this, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Also, another scripture that uh, is not real popular today, but I think is so significant for those of us who are believers from Ephesians, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Troy, that's the command. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy and cleanse her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without spot or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. This is a profound mystery, the mystery of the church and Christ, but so is the mystery of marriage. You are unique. There has never been a marriage just like yours, and God has the gift of ordaining for you just exactly what is appropriate for your personalities. In that, each one of you must love one another. The husband must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must, res must respect her husband. And then... In the book of John, chapter 13, when the disciples were with Jesus the night before he went out into the Gethsemane, he got up from the meal and took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And I understand that um, a Jewish slave was not allowed to do this. It was only a Gentile slave. It was one of the lowliest things that could be done. And yet Jesus, our master, knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples. And when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And he said, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, rightly so, for that is what I am now. I am your Lord and teacher. And I have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And I know that this is the secret of a marriage. Submitting to one another and always thinking and expecting that the other one is doing what is right even when at that time it may not seem exactly so, and giving the other one the benefit of the doubt. When there's a, when there's a problem or a difficulty, they're best left unsaid because the sooner they're left unsaid, the sooner they're forgotten. I just want to pray a blessing over you.
Father, it is, it is a special privilege that I have to pray a blessing over my son and my favorite daughter-in-law. I just pray, God, that you would, in unique and special ways, continue to lift them up and to encourage them and strengthen them and bless them and make them a blessing to their children and to their neighbors and to the ministry that they're involved in. Father God, I commit them to you and ask that you would bless them beyond measure, pressed down, running over. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For as much as this man and woman have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company and have declared the same by the joining of hands, I pronounce that they are husband and wife together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. And now may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace. May you so live together in this life that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. Troy, you may kiss the bride. Okay. Turn and face the people. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you for the very first time in this place, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Troy Tremaine. Thank you all so much for celebrating with us tonight. You know what this evening needs? Cookies and milk. And so uh, right now, they're headed downstairs where you can greet the, the family. And they want all of you to know that you're invited to join them downstairs in the fellowship hall for a cookies and milk reception. And that sounds terrific to me. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. You are dismissed.